speaking of the political situation and the way of changing things, there was a shock heard around the world, well, at least around the country, and it was Eric Cantor's loss to Dave Bratt. Here is how actually the mainstream media covered it. They said this couldn't be a victory for a conservative versus an establishment. No, this is something altogether different. Roll it. Tonight, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor became the first person in American history to lose his primary while holding that position. This is not a right-wing district. This is not this is not your redneck Riviera. The district, when when it was redrawn, got more no. rural, more uh, uh, culturally conservative. So you see them becoming uh, more white, more southern, more Christian, uh, more conservative, and more male. You can't outright the far right. This is just heading in absolutely the wrong direction for mm. the party. And how much should we see this as an Eric Cantor-specific thing? Cantor was the highest-ranking Jewish member of Congress in history. Uh, the only Jewish Republican, in fact, the only non-Christian Republican. Uh, in a circumstance like that, the fact that Eric Cantor is Jewish could have hurt him. Suddenly people realized Eric was Jewish and they didn't vote for him? Anti-Semitism? I'm not trying to oversimplify it. They don't, they don't like Jewish people? These right-wing people are basically, they, they're, they're cleansing the, the, the party. So to figure this all out is a man, who, who better to figure this all out than Seton Motley? He's the president of less government. He's been patiently waiting and we do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Seton. Seton, that was from the Gateway Pundit. Uh, post on his website our friend the gateway pundit and i picked that up but hey why did dave bratt win was it because all of a sudden there's a rash of anti-semitism in virginia <laughs> well apparently he converted to judaism after november 2012 <laughs> i mean that's the only explanation right uh he was a he was a good uh Lutheran until after the last election, <laughs> and then he converted to Judaism. Um, these people are idiots. He lost because, it, it, you know, you, you keep hearing it's this reason and that reason. Most of the reasons you've heard are all correct. It's all part of it. He, he completely ignored his district. He completely... The, the last straw, I think, for a lot of people, there's a guy, the, the, the guy that did the voter data for Dave Bratt, I saw him on Fox yesterday. He got the vote right within, like, outside of Enrico County, which is Richmond proper. He got the vote right, with, uh, like, how many votes he thought Bratt would get within, like, 200 votes or something. I mean, it was unbelievably accurate. Uh, and he totally, he, you know, he was very modest. He said, man, I way underestimated what we'd get out of Enrico County. And what happened in Enrico County was... Eric Cantor sent his thugs in to try to kick everybody out of the local Republican precinct jobs, and, and, and it's called slating. And he just went in there, and he tried to bully his way in and take over all those spots, and the locals didn't like that. So the reason this guy missed so underestimated how many votes Bratt would get in this county is because he, he, you know, either he wasn't aware of or underestimated the impact of Cantor being such a bully at the, at the local level the, the way he was. But it was certainly immigration was a factor in this because you, you, you can't, you know, that was what uh, Dave Black ran on. You, you know, I was, they, they mentioned this in that montage from Gateway Point of Jim Off, a very good guy. And they mentioned how, you know, it's, it, it, A, it's, it's, it's Judaism. And B, it's a takeover, a, 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 a purity test. And I said, you know, I don't know if it's a purity test so much as I'd like the second most powerful Republican in the nation to not agree with Obama, Harry Reid, and Chuck Schumer on so fundamental an issue as immigration. Just, Bravo. Just throwing that out there, you know. I, um, it, it would be much better if, if he was on, had a conservative position on on an issue as important as immigration. Uh, that, so that, uh, I got to tell you something. Not, and it cost him his seat. And I got to tell you something, Seaton. The way you put that, I think, could be part of a news clip in covering this election forever, because it is so clear, so concise, and it speaks volumes. Because is exactly, it represents the questions that so many of us have as conservatives about the establishment 
and it goes to that notion of what we've seen, and it, sometimes it's not just mere economics in the sense of socialism and socialism light, and that would be Democrats, Republican establishment, respectively. It goes to the issue of what you believe and how far you're willing to fight. And so many of us believe in the rule of law. We believe in enforcing our borders. We recognize if you don't, you're going to cost lives of children. Michael Eric Dyson, I hope you're listening. I've done two segments about you, my friend, you race hustler. But we do I care. I used to work out with his nephew. What's that? I used to work out with Michael Eric Dyson's nephew. Tell us about that. Oh, he's, <laughs> a, he's a very nice guy. He's a totally yeah. this hack. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a nice guy. It was at the gym I belonged to before I bought my house and moved. Um, you got the nice best guy. view. He's just a, he's just a uh, left winger, and every time I right. face he's a Facebook friend, and I send him something crazy his uncle said, and he wouldn't defend him. Yeah, I actually like his uncle too because his uncle seems like a nice guy, but a race hustler. And and I, it, what bothers me, and this is I guess I'll close with this question, Seton, because you've already analyzed it brilliantly. The question I have for you. But here's the question. Do the left, the ruling left, the, the ruling class, do they know better? Because they've got to be smarter than this. And if so... Can I, can I answer that with yeah. the, news, the news breaking right now? Sure. The, the leading candidate to replace Eric Cantor is more liberal than Eric Cantor. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy is awful. And he was going to walk away with it, penciling from Texas and um, Pete Sessions from Texas both bailed on running for majority leader. So it was going to be McCarthy's. And then at the last minute, Raul Labrador jumped in, thank goodness. He's a staunch conservative, Hispanic Republican, I know, heavens to Murgatroyd, um, <laughs> from Idaho, and a strong conservative at the last minute. Just, uh, I don't know if he can, you know, remember McCarthy's trying to get a promotion from WIP, so he knows how to count heads. I, you know, I'm very pleased Raul jumped in. I just, I, I just pray it's not so late in the game that he can't mount any kind of serious challenge to, to uh, McCarthy. But McCarthy's terrible, and he's far worse than, than Cantor. So if that doesn't demonstrate that Boehner didn't step in and say, okay, I've learned, I've learned my lesson, we're going to get a more conservative person, you know, as the majority leader, he, he obviously did not learn that lesson because he's not doing anything like that. Well, Seton, what we're going to have to do is have you on a couple times next week as this develops and unfolds, and we'll see who wins. But we need your input. We appreciate your input. President of Less Government, Seton Motley, has the best view. Check out his Facebook page, my heavens. It's gorgeous. Love you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Have a great weekend. You too, pal. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. And we will return with Ben Johnson, AFR Talk.